everything in our culture is designed toward like desire as a lack and desire as like an emptiness and like you can't have this and everything is geared towards like unrequited love. You can get those bad feelings out of the way by just going for it, just becoming what it is that you admire and what it is that you desire and then it's actually like satiable, you know, when I get dressed. I don't like have a set image in my mind, I just have like a feeling, like an electric feeling of desire, I guess, and then I have to kind of blindly fumble around and find like what fits mm -hmm. what fits those instincts. I definitely rely very heavily on clothing for transformation. With my band make out, you know, I thought like what you know if I get in a band like I'll I'm gonna do it like, you know, real, like, you know, Bowie style. I'm gonna like have my, this like mm -hmm. other person I can send out to do the job for me. And then it was so weird because I got in this band and it's it's a pop band and I found myself performing and I didn't want to like put someone else out there. There's a perversity people feel like they feel like it's sinful in a way to be totally true to their impulses and to be totally indulgent. That is like my interest in fashion too, why I care about clothes and why I care about what I look like because it's the people who say they don't care and who make an effort to not care that actually care the most. You can be a little reckless with your appearance and be creative about it. You're not as attached. If you really look at yourself and really think about yourself, really write about yourself and really get into your own feelings, you will connect with everyone else. I don't really shop really almost at all. Right. I uh, like all I've like inherited everything from my mom's friends or from my friends. This was Amazing. our old roommates. This is like vintage um, Yoji Yamamoto. This is the dress that I painted mm. that says Ad Captandum Vulgus, which I guess means to capture the crowd. So it was like for wearing for my show. This shirt that my friend Arabella made, and she doesn't make clothes that often, but when she does, they're so beautifully mm. constructed. I think a lot of the clothes I come into, I come in, like, people give me because they think they're like, only you could wear this. And what they really mean is only you would wear this, like, on a normal day. My mom's old, um, precious Alexander McQueen skirt. This I took from a costume person at my high school. And it was like the only, I don't steal, this was like the only thing I've ever stolen in my life. And I just couldn't, I just could not give it back to her. Doing is always good. Not making more shit and producing more necessarily, which is where I got caught up. The next step, which is having faith that people can see it and will see it and it will matter. I was raised by like a swarm of really like brilliant gay men felt kind of like a gay man or felt kind of queer. But as I got older when I dressed like a girl, it felt like I was like in drag. Yeah. Not that I was like a tomboy or that I was particularly androgynous. Maybe that's like the experience of being a woman for a lot of people. And what is like the next wave of threatening sexuality? I want to explore that in a more aggressive way in a, with a show. Girls drag too, as girls and as like creatures and as something in between. With all my experience acting with people outside of my group and outside of my mentors, is people like don't trust their impulses. They're really overtrained. Mm -hmm. And even if they're undertrained as actors, they're overtrained as people. Well, it makes sense for me to put up my legs on the seat now because I'm being seductive, right? Like, so that's a good place to do that. You know, there's, there's a lot of that. And I hate that. 80% of what I do is probably aimed at like making my little world like more beautiful in terms of what my mother finds beautiful. I'm kind of like designing an environment psychically and artistically for her.